How's it going everyone? So um, this is going to be the session one of class one. So the class one I want to focus on just uh, recapping After Effects, getting you a little bit more familiar with the program uh, so that you can maybe experiment with different ways of creating type moving into your trailer or whatever type of effects we're going to start looking at throughout our various classes and sessions uh, that should maybe spark some creative freedom creative thinking with regards to tackling the, your uh, your trailer project how you can maybe mask out uh, certain elements from the trailer focus on specific characters put type behind um, rotoscoped images or even just animating type in general so i played a, a video of animation before this started now you should have seen it and that's what we're going to be looking at today or in this class it's going to be broken up into various sessions but the first session is going to be looking at creating the type creating the pen tool trim paths to mask out the type and uh, depending on the time frame of this video we might even start looking at adding the color and fractal noise onto the type itself so the project is to create uh, or the activity would be to create the uh, word hello that builds up with various uh, variations in color and fractal noise and have an animated background and then transitioning that to different color variations of the same sort of um, typography build up or construction so just to start up everything I'm going to just make a, a new composition I'm going to keep it at 10 seconds for now and what I'm going to start with first of all is just to create a, a type layer, a text layer. And the font that I'm going to use for this is this layer personal use only. It's a nice sort of cursive calligraphy type of a font. And I'm just going to call this hello. going to make it 200 pixels and then I just want to go to the align tab and we're going to center align and vertically align it so that it's sort of all flowing together over here or oh, nice and centered okay so from here uh, what I want to be looking at is that I just want to keep the the font color white for now so if we go back to the character the align Yeah, to the character uh, I just want to change the full color of that to white for now so I can see exactly how this is going to be working okay so just looking at the video quickly so the idea is sort of just to get a feel of how the the word builds up okay so you can see that the H of the word starts building from the top of here going the whole way down and finishing and as it gets to a certain point a different path starts creating the the middle section of the letter H curls up until it gets to the breakaway point and then it's a separate a separate mask that occurs over here and a separate mask that occurs over here so this H consists of one two three four four separate masks whereas looking at the rest of the the rest of the words so they sort of are all connected so with regards to here now what can happen is, is that you can either try and pen tool everything together which would probably be ideal so you could have everything linked together over here following my mouse cursor link everything together create sort of a spiral and then end it off and this lower part of the O that can be a separate mask that sort of just um, appears at the same time so you can see over there it's a bit of a separate mask so it's either this small portion being a separate mask or this entire 
O letter being a separate mask. So there's multiple ways to sort of tackle this. The way we're going to sort of tackle it is to have your different masks over here, your different pen tool masks. Uh, one created over here, we're going to create this and then following the entire word other than this bottom part. Okay, so that's what we're going to try and look at now. So you have your text layer over here in your workspace, which is uh, titled hello. It obviously takes that information from whatever word you landed up typing. And what I want to do now is to create the mask for it. So to create the mask for it, we're going to be using the pen tool. So to use the pen tool successfully, the pen tool will be placed onto a shape layer. So you go to your layers, new layer, and we're going to look for a shape layer. I want to then select the pen tool. I uh, also want to remove the fill. We don't want to work with the fill. We want to work with the stroke and animate the stroke. So I'm going to give a solid color fill to the stroke itself. Now the color for this doesn't matter as long as it's something that uh, you can easily see and is visible against the black and white. So any sort of color would work. I'm going to go for a red color so that I know where I'm working, where I'm not working. Uh, the width of the stroke with regards to the pixel size over here on top, uh, I want to first create my first sort of um, pen tool mask and then adjust the stroke to see how much of the letter I can actually cover. So what's quite important to note at this point is that when you start making masks with the pen tool, then we're going to be using or adding a function to the pen tool itself called trim paths is that it is essentially going to build up the stroke created by the pen tool and it will start uh, building from wherever your first uh, your first mark is with the pen tool. So for example, if I start here on top and I start building up my stroke around this section of here, when I use the, the trim parts, it will build from the top of here all the way down to the bottom. You can obviously change that, but it becomes a bit confusing. So just as a, as a tip, wherever you want the, the mask to start building up from, that's where you should start with your pen tool. So for example, this middle section of the H, I want it to build from the middle, move the whole way around and then curve up here. So I'm not going to start at this point and work backwards. I'm going to start over here and work forwards. Okay, so for this over here, we're just going to start. Our shape layer is selected. And I'm just going to start relatively around this side of here. I'm going to try and get it more or less in the center as possible. Try and get the correct curves. It doesn't have to be perfect, but your goal is to try and make quite a smooth type of a type of a mask or type of a transition because this is the, the shape that your pen tool is going to build up on so if this is quite wonky or all over the place then it's going to be quite an unnatural mask which you're going to create so at this point now I have the basic shape and what I want to do is just play with the thickness to see how much of the letters I can actually cover so if I look at something around about uh, maybe 15, 15 covers up the majority of it. You can still see some white space, so I might want to go for something a little bit bigger. Perhaps 17, 17 does quite a good job. So when we're at this point of here, then I'm just going to reselect that with my pen tool. So with the pen tool now, all my different points which I created, you can see if I have my pen tool selected and I hover over my different vertices which I created, um, the icon changes from the pen tool to a black selection tool. So this allows me to left click and I can adjust wherever this point is to try and get a better representation of covering up the letter properly. So the same thing over here, I'm going to adjust it and it's still going to keep its handles and its positioning over here. So it's not going to deform anything that comes before or after it. So that's quite nice and useful. If however you create something that is a little bit um, off of here and it's got a bit of a sharp edge that you want to get rid of, if you hold down the uh, alt tab, the alt key and you just click and drag then you extend the handles to get more of a more of a curve instead of a sharp point i was going to undo that for now okay so once we at this point before i continue making the rest of the the rest of the mask for this is i just want to show you how we can adjust and add the trim parts to our to our stroke over here our stroke our pencil stroke so if you click the drop down arrow via by your shape layer, there's going to be two tabs, a content tab and a transform tab. So every layer which you create will have uh, the same transform tab. 
you get to manipulate the position, scale, rotation, and opacity of it. But we're not going to be looking at that for now. What we want to focus on is the contents tab. So this contents drop down contains all the properties that the stroke, which you just created, contains. So anything from the stroke to the path to the fill. And one of the first things we want to look at is under the stroke, because I'm only working with the stroke. I'm not working with the fill. And the one thing that I want to get rid of that I don't enjoy is that the font that I used over here is a very rounded font. So it won't necessarily make too much sense to have the ends of my stroke, which is applied to the pen tool, to be squared off. And that's squared off over here where it says the line cap. So this is going to be the cap of your line. And right now it's at a butt cap. So if we change it to a round cap, you can see it rounds off the edges and it sort of will create a much better flow and it will link in more with your with your typography choice. Now obviously if you choose um, a font that is more squared off then you might want to stick with the butt cap. You can also change it to a projecting cap that sort of um, creates a weird sort of dynamic and function over there. But I would suggest just sticking with the round cap it creates a nice flow and it looks visually more visually appealing than uh, a simple straight line. So once we have that sorted now then we want to add our trim parts. So notice I said add, because under the contents of here, slightly to the right hand side, there's an add option. And if you click this, um, there's a white and gray arrow key, it's gonna bring up a whole bunch of different functions that you can add and embed into the shape layer. And I've been speaking about trim paths, so that's exactly what we wanna add. We wanna add a trim path. Then under your shape, you'll see it creates a new tab that's called trim paths. Once you, once you select that drop down, you're gonna see there's a start and an end point and an offset. So for now, don't worry about the don't worry about the offset too much. We're gonna focus on the start and end point. So notice that the start point is at 0% and the end point is at 100%. That means over here at the start, this is at zero and at the end it's at 100. So right now, if I start decreasing this 100 value at the end, you can see that my path starts to retreat back to the beginning. So I'm going to be animating the end point, starting at zero, and then gradually filling it up, creating my mask. And then once we get to this point where everything is filled up, go back to the video quickly. So once we get to the point where everything has been filled up and we can see the type, then everything starts to break down in the same fashion that it built up. So that's what's going to be quite useful. It's going to be quite useful to work with the start point as well. Because if you start working with the start point, once everything has been built up, so you keyframe everything to build up, nice mask, you reveal everything, then you can animate your start point to work in the reverse fashion. So we can either do it that way, or we can pre-compose and just reverse the mask. But that's something we're going to get to a little bit later on. So this is sort of, how we're going to be animating the stroke or the fill with regards to masking out our type. So for this instance now I'm just going to carry on masking. So every time you want to create a new layer or a new stroke, so for example over here this is my first pen tool line, my second one is going to come across in this direction. So I'm going to go to layer, new, and create a new shape layer. Select my pen tool, the stroke is exactly the same. And on this new layer, that's where I'm gonna start creating my next mask. So there's nothing too fancy, there's nothing too um, difficult with regards to this, it's just about using the pen tool and feeling a little bit comfortable with your different uh, methods of using it. This doesn't need to be perfect again because it's just gonna work as a mask. So this is sort of where we're at now. Again, I'm just holding Alt and I'm dragging to try and get something that's a little bit more rounded off. And there's our second, our second stroke for the mask. And again, what I'm gonna do is go into content, go down into shape, into stroke, and I'm gonna change the line cap to round. And then the last thing I wanna do is to just add a trim path to that. And we're gonna leave it like that for now. Moving up again, gonna finish off the H, 
new shape layer back to the pen tool we're going to start over here i want to have this shape sort of come around like this and then bring it like that to get a nice curve on top there cover that coming around here so again it's just about following the shape of your typography and constantly manipulating how everything is working so again i just want to move this up slightly and start adjusting the handles to try and get something that fits the flow a little bit more and bring that down and again over here trying to adjust everything make it nice and rounded and then the last portion of the h new shape layer which is just going to be like that pretty much okay so shape layer three i didn't change the content of here of the stroke stroke we're going to make it a round cap and i want to apply trim paths to it and then shape layer four this is going to be same thing we're going to look at the contents shape in the stroke and make it a round cap and then the last thing is just to add a trim paths function to that and so i'm just going to be focusing more on the on the h for now so i want to make sure that it's not overlapping anywhere where it shouldn't let's see move this a little bit no that's fine that can go in there that's should be fine. I'll just adjust it a bit. Not too crazy. Hope not with that. Here we go and shape layer four. Let's bring this in a bit. And that's good. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to start animating. So I'm going to focus more on the H and I'm going to allow you to sort of experiment with the, the rest of the letter. This is just to give you a bit of a breakdown and understanding and how everything is going to be working. So then over here with the H, I'm going to start off by making the end 0%. I'm going to start off there. And I'm going to go forward a certain amount. Uh, if you want to go forward a keyframe or backwards a keyframe, you need to use the up, uh, the page up and page down keys on your keyboard. So that's page down will move you forward, page up will move you backwards. So let's work on something like maybe 10 frames, 10, maybe 15. Okay, so let's work on 15 frames and I want to build it up. So let's just see how that's sort of looking for now. So it's not too bad, it's got quite a nice speed to it. Again, everything is linear. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make it exponential so that you can have certain parts be faster than others, but that's when we're getting to the graph editor. So as that's sort of building, as soon as it passes this middle point, so around about here, that's when I want this stroke to start revealing the text. So as soon as it comes past over here, then it's got an equal split. So I'm gonna be looking at my shape layer two. We did add the trim paths already to it. The trim paths is over here. So at this point, again, I'm gonna start at zero. So start at zero there, we move forward 15. Move forward 15, and I'm gonna make it 100%. So now we kind of have this sort of look and feel happening. So it's got a nice build up. I think the timing is quite well as well. You can see everything sort of builds up equally, expanding out from that center point. And then once we get to about here, I don't necessarily want to wait for the mask to finish, my second mask to finish before I start the top function. So what I want to do is I want to build up the H a little bit more quicker. So I think once it gets to round about this point, I want to start building my mask three. So my mask three will start building on the next frame, which means that our mask number two will be at this position. 
So this is more or less where I want to start building the top part of my mask. So over here we're going to go into shape layer 3. And we did add the trim paths already. Did add the trim paths already. So I'm just going to again reduce the end percentage. I'm going to keyframe that. And then because this is a bit of a, a shorter mask in comparison to the first two, I'm going to just move forward 10 frames instead of 15. And over here, I'm going to build it up completely. So now this is sort of where do we, what we have going. So a nice little build up and then the end. So again, once you get to around about this point over here, that's when I want to start building up the last section of my mask. Go to the trim paths, decrease the end value. And this is much shorter, so I'm going to give it about five or six frames. Go about six and fully extend it out. So now we've created a mask for the edge. So note as well, it's also quite uh, it's quite slow, but it does it does do the job. It masks the entire letter completely, except for this little portion of here. But you won't see it because you'll only you will be showing this uh, the uh, the white text through the mask of this red. So everything that's outside of this red will be won't be visible in your final sort of product. So something else which is quite nice and very good for you to take into consideration. So I'm going to be looking at this very first mask layer over here and how that builds up. And if I go to the drop down and I highlight my two position, my two position keyframes, and I move over here to the graph editor, you can see that they are quite they are quite linear, meaning that they move in a straight line from their starting position to their end position. So if I select both of these two keyframes and I press F9, what it does is, is it, it applies easy ease to the keyframes, which essentially makes them Bezier curves, meaning that now you have handles for you to adjust how fast and how slow different parts of the animation move. So for this sort of animation, what I think would be quite nice to have is to perhaps start off quite slowly and maybe end a bit faster. So I want the start position. Move sort of like that. So we're gonna have more of an up your curve. You can see it starts off relatively slow and then it picks up quite fast towards the end. So nice slow start and really fast towards the end. So again, you can obviously just play around with this and see how uh, you want your animation to work. Maybe that's a little bit too fast. You can always keep on adjusting things. So again, just take some time, play around with it, see whatever suits uh, the feel that you want to go for. So by doing that, I hope you noticed that I now messed up my keyframes here slightly. So there's obviously going to be quite a bit of adjusting and and moving uh, through all your different masks to make sure that everything is sort of done correctly. So I want to do the same thing with my second mask. I'm going to highlight my keyframes, go into the graph editor. Uh, I want to select them again, uh, press F9 so that you can apply the easy ease to it. And same thing, I also want uh, I think for this case, I would like more of a faster build up and a bit of a slower ending. Not too fast of a build up. So again, something, maybe something more like this. So the way the graph is structured now is that it starts off quite fast and then it sort of tapers out so it starts off it's got a bit of a faster start and then it sort of tapers out towards the end so then we can always adjust our positioning so that it starts relatively about there so that they start at the same time and then you can just carry on playing to make sure that everything sort of matches in that kind of a fashion Okay, so once you've done everything and you've adjusted all your keyframes accordingly, 
So now we have this edge, we have the red trim paths that have been building up this edge. Now how do we make this into a mask? So for the purpose of showing you the mask, what I want to do is I just want to change the color of our type to about the yellow so that you can see it nicely. And what I want to do is, is I'm going to select all four of my shape layers that have the trim parts and that are building up and making the mask. And I want to pre-compose them, I want to group them so that they can act as one mask and not separate masks. So I selected them all, I'm going to right click, I'm going to click pre-compose and this is going to be my mask layer. Okay, so right now at the moment I've just done the H. So once I apply the mask, I want, to, I want you to just be aware that only the H will be revealed, the rest of the lettering won't be revealed because I don't have a mask for them. So only pre-compose your mask layers, your pen tool shape layers once you've completed the entire word. Otherwise, you're only going to reveal different parts of it. So now, for example, uh, as I explained in the After Effects recap video, if you go into your track mat and want to apply alpha mask, you see that everything disappears. Because at the start, our red mask is not visible because it's going to be built up. Oh, it's not visible, my bad, because of the, the track map. So at the start, nothing's going to be visible. Well, if I make it a mask, nothing's going to be visible because nothing sort of happens in the beginning. You can see once I start moving forward, then you can see the edge kind of building up. Okay, so again, one thing to really pay attention to and notice is my mask does a good job over here but at these two sections the stroke is way too thick so the stroke is too thick and it's covering um, too more than what it needs to so it's um, so over here my stroke is covering too much my stroke is too thick and it's covering a bit of here and a bit of here and that's leading to a very weird build up so then you just have to go in and try and adjust your stroke as much as possible. So that's my layer 2, that's not working out too well, maybe if I tried 16. Stick with 16, let's see how that works out. So again, make it the mask and you can see, okay, not really doing too much for me. Let's try 15, let's see how 15 works. Still not a lot, and we go. Let's try 13. Okay, so that's much better. So 13 is much better. So you can see over here the build up now doesn't have these two weird uh, outsticking edges, and it sort of builds up quite naturally now. So again, it's all just it's it's all about um, placing your masks uh, correctly, masking out the correct stuff, uh, playing around with the different speeds and values and your graphs so that um, you can have something that's quite smooth and quite a nice build up and that looks quite natural. So that's a nice way to sort of uh, reveal the H and everything is masked, so I can put the. Uh, the transparent background on so you can see that there is no black background everything is building up quite nicely and just to make this more visible I can also just go back in again and change the color of this word so let's, yeah, let's go for a dark blue color so that's how everything is going to be looking once you start using trim paths uh, shape layers and masking so again I'd just like to say that your mask you should only pre-compose your mask once you've created trim paths for the entire word hello. So do the entire word with trim paths first, play with the graph values, uh, increase the speeds of the different uh, positions, and once that's done, apply your, um, your, rounded, your rounded caps 
and then you pre-compose you can title it mask layer make sure your mask is always above the layer you want to mask so for example I'm telling my lettering that you need to be masked by the mask layer the layer above it my lettering needs to be masked by the layer above it it can't be the other way around I can't tell the mask my mask layer my trim paths to be masked by uh, the word hello because the word hello is very static it's not moving nothing is going to happen so just keep that in mind your mask layer must always be above your actual layer that you want to mask whether it's be text or shape or anything along those lines but this is how you would build text using trim paths to kind of have like a handwritten feel and that sort of a thing so i hope this all makes sense i hope this is a nice way for you to uh, come to grips with um, using trim parts and building up letters and words. So yeah, peace.